Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I have a quick but important update to the dynamic analytics video I released back in October. For all the bells and whistles that slicer had, one issue was the percentage part of the slicer, where if the slicer was set to a percentile outside of the range of the calculation, it would throw an error. Now in this video, I'll implement a fix to prevent that error from ever happening. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So let's first start by reviewing the initial issue. As an example, if I was to come to percentile inc and move this slider either to the very bottom, which would be zero, or to the very top, which is 100, you'll get an error. If I keep going up, 89 still works, but if I go anything past 98%, you'll see that there's an error saying the visual has an unsupported percentile. If you click see details, you'll see that the percentile value must be in the range of either one divided by n plus one, or n divided by n plus one. Basically that is the min and the max that the percentiles can be for this to calculate. If we close this, I actually calculated this. If we come over here, we'll actually see that I have a percent max and min. So if I select the percent min right here and open this window up a little bit, let's go ahead and zoom in to make it a bit more readable. What I've done is in here, reproduce the calculation that is needed for the min and max. For the min, you take one and then you divide it by whatever the number of values are. Let me go ahead and set this back to something where you can see the values that are in this visual. The values in question that we need to count are the month and year across this axis. So let me open up the percentage min again. So that is the percent count. I'm calculating the distinct count of all the months and years in this value here, all selected, which allows this to also take any filter selections that we might have down the road if we were to have a more complete report with additional slicer selections. So that's my min. I'm taking one divided by the count plus one. And then additionally, I have a percent max over here, which is the other calculation where you actually take n for that value here, which is the percent count, and divide that by that same value plus one, which gives us the max percentile percentage that that can be set to as well. So now what I've done, we come over to analytics line, and we actually send it to either of these percentiles here. Watch the slicer selection down here. Notice that the minimum I can have is three, maximum I have is 97. Now, if I was to come over to percentage of max, I can actually set that to 100 or to zero. So I have a greater range because I can pick anything between zero to 100. So these are further filtered to make sure, there we go, that I don't actually select outside of that range if I'm using the slider selection here. And you can see that there's a filter on this visual called percent adjustment flag. So let's go ahead and open up that as well. And I'll step through the selection in here. So I'm basically seeing whatever the slicer selection is and I'm running a true switch statement in here. So basically just do a check to see if either or the slicer selection is the percentile INC or percentile EXC. So if either of these are met, there's a condition where two conditions need to be met now. So if both the minimum percentage is greater than the percent min, and in this case, I can either be using min or max because I'm describing a single value from that slicer selection. Basically, I'm just saying, is that percentage min greater than the min that I've set? And is the percentage max less than the max in here? So this basically filters out those values that would be below or above that range that I'm allowed. And if so, return one, else return zero. And then if the slicer selection is not either of these two, then I'm simply just returning one. So always return true. And you'll notice that the actual filter is just set to one. So that essentially what that's doing is that is filtering my slicer to make sure that it is now going to be below that top threshold and above that minimum threshold. So now I won't ever get those error messages. And thankfully this was a pretty quick fix and removing this was really the only primary issue that I had with that previous video that I had done. So now I feel like this is fairly wrapped up and complete. You can put a bow on it and you can really implement this anywhere without getting any kind of technical issues with the slicer depending on which of the analytic line calculations that you wanna do. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.